Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Alex Gupta. Now, humor is an essential part of our everyday lives. Most of us can easily recall funny moments, like something you saw in a film or on TV or a good joke. But how can humor be used as a tool in more serious circumstances, like in strategic communications? Joining us in the studio right now is Maxim Kiak. He is the co-founder of the Global Ukraine Foundation and the co-author of a recent report. It's titled, The Use of Humor for Solidarity, Denigration, and Stress Relief in the Ukrainian Media During the Russian Aggression Between 2014 and 2016. Mr. Kiok, thanks for coming. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Your report, which you co-authored, it's 150 pages. Right. Would you be able to explain some of the you know, important elements in your report. What did you discover? What are some of the uses for humor? Well, um, for sure, I cannot fit everything in just in like 10 mm. minutes or something. But uh, yeah, you're absolutely right that I'm a, I'm a co-author. We also have another authors from Latvia, from the NATO Stratcom uh, Center of Excellence. Actually, that's research of NATO Stratcom. Um, well, uh, you're absolutely right that humor is the everyday life factor. But uh, the thing is that I don't know why, but unfortunately, we don't know uh, the, the the whole you know the whole importance of use of humor in uh, such field as strategic communications or what we call uh, counter propaganda um, activities and so on. So uh, the thing is, the very important thing was to combine all these approaches, like political approach, sociological approach, psychological approach, of uh, how we perceive humor, and trying to apply it into practical life. Uh, I think that somehow, or uh, to some extent, we did it. But uh, uh, actually, we, we have made like a toolkit. It's in the end of this book, the, the uh, Stratcom Laughs. Uh, actually, I'm one of those person who has this book, and I'm I would gladly uh, give it as a gift to your uh, channel. And uh, actually, we have a toolkit how to apply humor in counter propaganda uh, activities. Uh, you mentioned just my part, which was on Ukraine and how Ukrainian side, Ukrainian media was using humor uh, to counter uh, such propaganda from Russian side. And I used lots of examples. I even uh, examined some uh, strategies, some techniques, uh, like uh, using symbolic language, language uh, metaphors or uh, mixing uh, music with uh, some uh, pro-Ukrainian words, uh, lyrics, and uh, so on. So um, the thing is that uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, Ukraine has a lot of examples. That's actually what I have said just in the beginning of my presentation in Riga, that I have two news for you, which is bad news and good news. The bad news, we have no strategical uh, approach um, on the level of the, of the state level of using humor. But I have a good news that we have lots of plenty of examples of use of humor in Ukraine. And that's what I actually tried to do in Riga to show that we have lots of uh, examples of uh, such activity. Can we say that humor is turned into a tool of information warfare? Such jokes are aimed at domestic consumers or those Russians who live abroad? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, I think that humor is probably the best assessing of information attacks, alien information attacks. If we, for example, take uh, into consideration the, the basic, the most simple uh, strategies is like uh, ignoring or uh, mirroring, reflecting someone's messages. I think the humor is like kind of, you know, level up strategy because it needs creativity. And uh, I think that humor is the best method to kill uh, messages uh, when it comes to the domestic audience. Because uh, I remember the words which were said by Martin Bress. He's the blogger, he's the anchorman at the Armia FM. And he was speaking to me and said that, yeah, you're right. In 2014-15, we have uh, mocked this war, he said. Like, we, all, the, all the information messages from Russian, uh, from Russian Federation, from Kremlin, were mocked by, by Ukrainians. And um, we can also mention just the, the recent examples uh, of uh, Haag International Court, when the representative of Russia said that, yeah, separatists found the, the tanks and grads just in the coal mines, which of course is weird. But after that, just Ukrainian social media just uh, came out and uh, just said that, yes, they, they had like produced plenty of pictures of absolutely mocking this, uh, uh, these studies of a representative of Russia. Or we can also mention the, just the example which was like one month ago with uh, Zorian and Shkiryak, which uh, basically 
which is basically one person, not two persons. So plenty of examples and we have, uh, we have really uh, um, lots of examples of using uh, humor in Ukraine. That's interesting that you're using satire right. to mock uh, these statements that are perhaps untrue, probably untrue, and you're using them on the you know, domestic side and internationally. How, how effective has it been? I mean, if you could you know, score it on a, a scale, how effective has it been so far? Well, uh, I think, well, if, if we just speak about the scale, I think like it could be better. But let, let's say 10 out of 10, let's say. But uh, again, uh, we, we haven't even examined the, the, the fifth part, part of using of humor. I think so. Um, even if we speak about NATO countries, uh, they are losing in, term, in terms of use humor because if we, if we look at Russia, the humor in Russia, use of humor in Russia is more like, you know, vertically. From the Kremlin to other like comedy shows like KVN, uh, Projector Paris Hilton and so on and so on. So in these terms, the horizontal structure of, uh, of uh, European uh, policy is, uh, of course, is a failure, but uh, still, uh, I think somehow Europe, the West, can cope with it. So when you say vertical, does that mean it's coming straight from the top? Absolutely. I, I can just, well, just a recent example. Our research has led to the, the massive uh, weird reaction from, uh, from Kremlin, from Russian media. Just two days ago, the, the Projector Paris Hilton comedy show, which is probably the most uh, famous in Russia, they just started their, their, uh, their program from this research. Uh, also, um, the first person, one of the first person who just reacted on this research was Maria Zaharova. She's the representative of, of uh, Russian MFA. And uh, she, I'm absolutely sure that she did, haven't even read this, but uh, she started, she, she tried to mock this research by saying that, you see, they are, they are, they are uh, telling that KVN is, uh, uh, is a, a, like a tool of propaganda and so on and so forth. So it means that we hit the, tar we hit the target. It means that KVN is more, most likely is uh, a tool of Kremlin because I don't know any other uh, TV program which can last like more than 40 years, but KVN does. Can we, uh, well, can we take, for example, Kvartal 95, a famous program in Ukraine. They have made parodies of Russian propagandists, Dmitry Kiselo yep. making the news and also of ordinary Russians living in a Ukrainian family and even the Russian hybrid forces. How effective do you think this tool is? You mean specifically Quartal 95? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I also examined Quartal 95, uh, some of the examples. Also, I, I examined this example by mocking uh, Evgeny Kiselov uh, in, the, in the, the program, which is, was called Liar Liar. And also uh, another parody of Quartal 95, which is, about, uh, which is called 17 Moments of Spring. It's actually a parody on the TV series, famous Soviet TV series. And yes, I think they're absolutely, um, absolutely efficient in terms of that they are trying to make it too absurd. So every, like every message of Russia, they are, made, they are trying to make it too absurd. You know? For example, the, the news that uh, uh, in Ukraine, in Kiev, there is only Kiev junta nationalists and so on. They, so they are trying to, to, to show it in their... Um, in the uh, programs, like uh, showing, like the, the with the title, here is Kiev, here is the center of, of Kiev junta, and so on. Or, or Ukrainians are portrayed as uh, uh, people in in uh, those uh, Nash's su suits. Or uh, so many examples. I mean, I think that Quartal 95, in this sense, and, and also because it uses mainly a Russian language, is a very good tool. But together with uh, Quartal 95, we have uh, some other examples, like Antin Mukharski. Uh, his YouTube channel, or Mirko Sablich and his uh, art formation is also very good. They have like several hundreds uh, views in, uh, in, in, on YouTube and so on and so on. Also political characterists, characterists, uh, characterists like uh, Pekelne Bulba or, uh, or, uh, or, another, uh, or Grigory Klučnik, for example. So we have lots of, uh, lots of different um, applies of humor in Ukraine. How has humor in the last two or three years changed since the annexation of Crimea? Who do you, they are, you know, who do they ridicule now and why? Well, uh, again, I, I didn't, I, I haven't like researched, I haven't examined the uh, specifically Russian uh, situation, but still I, I had to. And uh, I think that since uh, annexation of Crimea, the humor in Russia became more aggressive. 
especially uh, towards Ukraine. So when they are mocking some other country like Western country, uh, and after that they are mocking Ukraine, so we can see the big difference. Uh, usually what they are doing there is uh, like, uh, they, they are providing with some news, they, they are trying to mock it, and then they, they just move to some, you know, stereotypes about Ukraine, that they are foolish, they, they drink a lot, they, they, they are corrupted, and then they're, they're just going to, uh, you know, to all stereotypes of uh, Maidan. Um, and after that, the, the, the news, the, the news that, which was in the very beginning, becomes like a, a totally fake news. It's just another, another reality after it. So, in this sense, of course, humor is uh, uh, not just a tool of counter-propaganda or propaganda. Humor is a good tool for creating, creating another reality, alter reality. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Kiak, for joining us in the studio today. Thank you very much. I'm Alex Gupta. Today I was with Maxim Kiak. He's the co-founder of the Global Ukraine Foundation and the co-author of a recent report. Its title, The Use of Humor for Solidarity, Denigration and Stress Relief in the Ukrainian Media During the Russian Aggression Between 2014 and 2016. Mr. Kiak, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Thanks.